All right. All right. So what's up, everyone? This is Paul Garcia with the Offering Webzine. I am here today at Reggie's in Chicago with none other than the mighty fucking suffocation. How are you guys doing today? Good in there, man. Right on. You guys are on tour right now supporting Pinnacle of Bedlam, latest release. Yep. How's the tour going? Uh, it's been pretty good. Been good. Sick been shows, good. sick pits? Yeah, there's been quite a few uh, pretty crazy sick pits uh, all throughout uh, the West Coast. Yeah. It's pretty good, yeah. Is this your first time playing at Reggie's Rock Club this in Chicago? Is first it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember ever being here. Yeah, I think it's the first time because uh, most metal shows these days are coming through here. Mm -hmm. And when I saw stuff, I was like, yeah, hey, I, I haven't seen that yet. It's yeah. insane. So, um, kind of a generic question, but since this is your first time at this new venue, do you guys have memories of like killer venues throughout the career of Suffo? Is there places well, you yeah, I mean, especially out here in Chicago, I remember way back in the day, the Thirsty Whale, Thirsty. man, which is like scary as fuck, 140 <laughs> degrees, yeah. my amp is sweating, I'm hoping it's still going to work after yeah. the gig, you know. There's you were thirsty. The yeah, I was very thirsty, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not even going to lie, that was definitely Deal. But I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of gigs in a lot of places that like we've played in that has had like tons of like, you know, just crazy sick pits and we've had good times with yeah. So it's not like just one spot anymore. It's, it's yeah. like, you know, we go through California, we look forward to going and playing out there on the strip. And it's like, yeah. you know, we go to Seattle, we look forward to playing there. We go to Mexico and, you know, we look forward to playing there. So there's a lot of places. Badass, badass. All right, so now you guys have stated in previous interviews, uh, new album, Pinnacle of Bedlam. Yep. Basically, um, I'm not going to ask you what it means, because I know you've answered that on time. Yeah. Basically, it's a meltdown of the social structure. Yeah, pretty I mean, much, in a okay. nutshell. Do, um, as a serious question, do you guys believe we're going to reach that point? Um, really, I don't know, but I think it makes for pretty cool subject It sure does. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I mean, when you, look at it, it, when you look at it from a whole, it's like, you know, things evolved so slowly throughout the social structure yeah. that people don't immediately make the changes that are necessary in order to like make it safer and happier for us right. all and I just think that uh, in the long run we see more of the negative now that communication is so much better that's true we see more of the negative and what they want to do in order to kind of call you into a certain framework and way of thinking yeah so it's like you know, it's not really quite fair because we're not the ones that are developing our social structure. Right. It's them really kind of altering it to a point where it's like, you look at everything that's going around and like 2012 was, it was like, yeah. everybody thought it was going to be the end of the world, holy shit, 2012 <laughs> party, we're all going to die. And uh, and the party just and the party just kept going more death and taxes. Yeah, I don't think anything's ever going to happen. Well, I would, I, I would hope not. I mean, it's the earth and kills us all. Yeah, if I see a anything. giant gleaming star in the sky that's like way too close, I mean, you know, I think maybe yeah. it could be the end. But so you don't think it's going to be an end that humans bring a bond by our, our stupidity and fighting? I, nah, I would hope not. I would I hope think so. to think oh, that yeah. people are smarter than that. You yeah. know what I mean? But you know, there are a bunch of dumb motherfuckers out there, so you just <laughs> never know who's in charge of fucking up some shit. You yeah, know? That, right. All right, so you guys are obviously touring for Pinnacle of Bedlam. Are there some uh, songs off the new album that you guys are finding awesome live that you enjoy playing? Uh, we've, we've been doing like four songs off four the now. album live on this tour, and uh, they've pretty much been into into all four. I mean, like yeah. you get some nights where the, the crowd's broken up, the people in the front are just watching the new song. Yeah. People in the middle are moving, and then there's people in the back that just stand there watching the new songs. And then when we play the old songs, the everybody starts moving again. Yeah. Are there like favorite live staples in the set from the early guys? Well, I mean, there's always songs that we always end Leads up playing. Like, like you know, it's just we've had so many records out, and people expect to hear older yeah. songs. So we don't want to disappoint the older fans that have listened to our records over the course of the years and go, oh man, you know. Yeah. So we pick out the oldies, but goodies, and that's really why we don't come out and also play like the whole new album live because that would take up the majority of the set right and then we couldn't really play any of the older songs so we kind of mix it up on tours play a few songs here mix in the older songs and kind of like redo our set for the next time you know right. what i mean so it, it keeps it interesting you know we want to keep the impact of what suffocation is and not play twenty thousand songs the point where everybody's just standing there like holy shit can i just go home <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean really i mean i know i got my money's worth but this is just fucking ridiculous, you know? Yeah. And, and by the time all the other bands play, and usually we're the headliner, so, mm. you know, people are usually kind of cooked knowing that we're the last band. Yeah, they're anticipating it. Yeah, you know, and then everybody explodes during Jungle Rot, and we're like, fuck, you know? <laughs> fuck. 
<laughs> They're all worn out and shit, just standing there like shit. All right, um, all right, so for this tour and, I don't know, for the album, have you guys changed up your gear at all? Are you guys still recording the same stuff that you've had since um, Guy came back in the band? Or? Um, I don't know what I mean. Well, we, we recorded Pinnacle actually with uh, PV3120s mm. with 6L6 tubes. And right before the store, we just got a set of um, PV triple X twos. Oh, really? And those had the L thirty fours in them, right? Yeah, I think so. And we didn't even do bias and we did nothing. We just came right down on top. Really? Of them. Yeah. Oh no shit. Yeah, and I switched up some guitar shit. I'm on ESPs now. Yeah. And uh, we got a couple Max on delay pedals. Yeah, I've got some Max right on before pedals. the store. They were running through the loop. Do you guys get a lot of like endorsement offers for equipment that you? I mean, maybe you're interested in I mean, using it, but you would never use it for stuff. Not a lot. Not really. Of Usually, the stuff that we're, we're getting offers for, if we even get offers, is like we're usually just going after what we what we what use. you want. Yeah, yeah what we don't want what we use. Right on. I want to ask that for all the gearheads. Yeah, there's people always want to know what's going on with the gear. Um, all right, so I want to talk about um, maybe possible uh, tours in the future. There's been rumors for a year or something about a big five death metal tour. Is this realistic this year? Is it realistic rumors. at all? Rumors. It's just rumors. It's something that if the buzz gets big enough, and maybe someday somebody will make it happen. Right. Yeah, you know, it would, but be, it would be very cool. You know? <coughs> yeah. But I mean, you know, to the timing of all the bands, as well as you know, having venues that would do it, the actual amount of cost that it would take is just like something that's probably pretty out of hand. So yeah, logistically, it's yeah. I if mean, the it, buzz it, got big enough, it would have to be done. Right. Right now, the buzz is just. A yeah, it's kind of buzzing. Yeah, it's yeah. like social networks. Yeah. Type yeah. Shit. Well, I think most people, even if they hear about the tour, they're like, I don't think that could happen. Yeah, yeah, you know, know what I mean. Nugget. But it's nice to dream. Right, on, right. On. Okay. Um. So obviously, there's been talk over the last years about a DVD. Yeah. Are we yeah. gonna be seeing it, or what's going on with this thing? People told me to ask this. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, right now we're just stockpiling more and more footage. I mean, yeah. Obviously, you know, we did the making of DVD and the suffocation record. And of course, we're still working on you know the whole, the whole the official caboodle, mm. official suffocation DVD. Right. Yeah, we're working with a guy named Tommy Jones. Yeah, from, I mean, from the studio. Oh, the guy's just a the total, studio. He's a total schmuck while he sits he's here and videotapes. Ah, there he is. Working on it you right now. Guy, actually, you gotta get that guy. Z. Tommy Jones, Tommy Jones, that's the guy. So in the trailer for the DVD, there'll be a part where some asshole like me says, is that DVD coming? Yeah, and there you go, there he is. We're working <laughs> that's on what it. He's, we're working on he's working on it. He's working on it. All right, right. Like, yeah, so we're, you know, we're kind of stoked that we we had the opportunity to do the videos that we've actually had yeah. just like recently, as well as be able to take all that older footage that, because we, you know, we ran into problems with videographers and things yeah. of that nature. So we kind of had to like almost start over again, and it was cool that we ran into Tommy because at least he knows what the fuck he's doing. Yeah, we're so yeah, like he did, a death he did metal the making band. of DVD. He did our, our video as yeah. Grace Descends. Oh sure. That's and sure. Uh, he's already been working on the Legacy of Miles. Yeah, I mean he's putting in his over he's putting in his overtime. Uh, nice. On working for us, so it's really cool actually. Right on. Very happy here. All right, so now um, obviously Mike Smith is out, and Dave Carr yeah. is in the band. Yep. Um, Tragic for certain people. It's awesome. It, it kind it, it kind of sucks because it's unfortunate that things had to come to a head and it's like such a sticky conclusion. But yeah. I mean, I think we're a lot better off. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Dave's fucking awesome and he totally shreds. So having a good time with that. You know? Well, now with Dave in the band, are there? Um, I'm, I'm not. You're probably not no, writing up, but you have um, ideas for new riffs, new songs. Are you writing towards his strengths? Well, it's well, it's not even necessarily that. Dave's a really just all-around good drummer, yeah. so basically I'm just going to stick to the same writing that I always have been doing. I yeah. guess and the same thing with him. Yeah. Now that we have a drummer who puts their own, you know, unique ideas in it, it's really yeah. cool. We don't have any problems, like, bouncing ideas off of each other and things of that nature. I mean, it's going to make it a little bit easier. But right now, I mean, it's still a little bit early. We're, I'm very, like, in the pre-fucking yeah, middle right. area. Yeah. I'm thinking about writing riffs for another record right now. Is you know we're right. really busy just trying to fill the quota, of playing all the shows for this last one. Yeah. Well, as we're talking about Mike Smith still. Uh, he did perform uh, "Beginning of Sorrow." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Okay. Does that mean that you guys have recorded all those songs from that album no, and they're no. sitting around? Okay. No, 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 no. no. So it's like these guys were in the studio all one day. He, he, basically, what's going on is like. Um, you know, Breeding Spawn had a terrible production just from in general. So every time that we do an album, we pretty much record one song off of it. Right. Just as like a bonus track. Even though the production between every album is always different, mm -hmm. 
every single one of those records sounds a million times better than Breeding the Swamp. <laughs> so eventually, you know, when all these suffocation records are done, you should literally be able to pick every yeah. re-recorded song and yeah. put them all together and get one decent sounding Breeding oh, the Swamp okay. record. So there's still two songs left for it, yeah. and I mean, you know, it'll be a little while before we do another software record. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we expect to be actually recording it, you know, to do another that's song, cool. as right. well as do our new material. But that's a couple of years off for right now. Right. But, do you guys write new material, or do you guys write it all when you're on the road? Well, it's pretty difficult to do when you're on the road. I mean, you know, we're, at this point, we're in a bus, and it's not even in a van. In a van, it's even worse, because, yeah. you know, just to pull out an instrument and try to work on a riff while you're driving down the road, especially when you're tired, you're up all the time. Yeah. You know, shows are far. We do sometimes to me. I mean, like, we do have a check and shit. We screw yeah, around. I mean, we, we can screw around a little bit. But it's like you're at your home and with your. Yeah, it's equipment. a lot different than when you're at your home and you're really sitting there thinking out your riffs in a comfortable environment. Yeah. You know, uh, there's not so much shit going on around you where you can actually concentrate to write. For at least for me, for him, you know, sometimes he'll be able to pull his guitar out and just write yeah, the riffs. Yeah. Sometimes I'm fishing. But yeah, yeah sometimes yeah, yeah. you're fishing. All right. Uh, so now you guys are obviously on the road. It's tough to find places to eat. I want to ask you guys yeah. favorite places to eat on the road. Favorite place in Chicago to eat? We like Jack in the Box. Yeah. <laughs> All Jack right. In the box. We don't have it in New York. Yeah, we used kind of, to back in the day. We used to. They back took in it from. The day, they took yeah. it from us. Fuck. So now we don't get the 99 cent dual greasy tacos, and that's like kind of really fucked up. Don't they have them at Burger King? No, not, they not, not, not at our Burger King, man. It's, yeah, you'd think it's the same shit. Yeah. Yeah. They had it like once at a Burger King out in Long Island, and that was it. It was gone. Never, yeah. to, see, never to be seen again. No Jack's greasy tacos. Yeah, when I was younger, I knew of at least like five or six locations. Yeah, the now there's none. Then it was down to like two. I mean, there's a bunch of things that we don't have that everybody else has. That you're envious of. For the yeah, most yeah, part, I'd like to be able to eat kind of healthy on tour, but it never happens. Yeah. yeah we have to eat it. You know, we have to eat at Reggie's. Because we're fucking hungry. <laughs> Reggie's ain't too bad. No, Reggie's yeah, decent. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that. Nice and all. Well, I ate their chili. And we have friends, too, at different different places that come out and bring us barbecue and shit. Like oh, that. hell yeah. Down That's in true. Texas, both of the Texas shows, we have people come out with the barbecue. That's awesome. It was pretty cool. Really good. The only time I was in Texas, I had barbecue for the first time. Oh, really? I mean, like, I've had barbecue in America, but yeah. once yeah, I was that's like, oh! That's style. If you're talking about Texas, that's yeah. the style. It's oh, all about it barbecue. Amazing. So, um, what's the rest of the plan for um, the year for 2013 for Suffolk? We're, uh, after this tour, we're doing uh, a European tour. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll probably have about eight or nine days off, and then we go over to Europe, and uh, that'll be with um, John Gallagher from uh, oh, he's doing the whole Euro thing? He's doing the whole European tour with us. How did that work out, um, at least the week that you guys were in the USA? Ah, uh, it worked out great. Yeah, I mean, John's We really had a great brutal, time with him. He's personally he, he, Yeah, he's, he's one of the boys, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, So yeah. it's not like a big deal, but... Uh, he's an East Coast death Yeah, guy. and it's... It, I mean, we've known him you know, He's not Frank, and he's not trying to be. Right, yeah. He's John Gallagher, and it's yeah. sick hearing his voice on our, on our shit. It's yeah, cool. yeah, I mean, it still keeps the brutality of what it all is that's about. True. That's what was important. Unfortunately, Frank can't do everything because of job, economy, children, the whole nine yards. Yeah. It's like he's pretty much fucking back to the wall kind of shit. So I think that also kind of gives the fans a little bit of a gift because although you know you've probably seen Frank Mullen a bunch of times, yeah. now you get to see like some guest vocalists. You're like, yeah. oh, well, shit, yeah, you know, and it adds to the little YouTube collection that's yeah. gonna go out there because everybody's out there with a fucking webcam. Like, yeah. You know, wow, this is cool. So we get back from that European thing, uh, like August. No, not August. June, July. Oh, dude, you got me on the time frame. You we get back from, <laughs> from Europe June 8th. And then I think somewhere in the middle of June, we're flying to Canada for one show. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Yeah, one off in Canada. Yeah, yeah it's like a festival they have. Oh, yeah, I think uh, it's July 6th, we're flying to Nicaragua for a show. So we're going to And then Nicaragua the end of July. July. Then the end of July, we're doing Mexico City. Colombia, Chile, Peru, Brazil, Argentina. Damn, this has got a four different I, yeah. I know for a fact that this, I think it's Marduk is headlining three of them. Really? And then one of them, also Vader and Sinister is playing. And oh my God. So I don't know what, it was still, I know we're definitely going. I just don't right. know who else is playing, what shows. No sure. Um, yeah. After that, I don't know, we were talking about another US tour, but I don't know what's going on yet. No shit. Sure. 
And also, there's still the uh, the whole Asia Australia. Oh yeah, market yeah, the whole market that they're tentatively working on now yeah. for like the end of the year. Or so. I think if that happens, it'll probably happen like January. January, February. yeah, you know, just right. It's nice over there. But there's always a lot of spot shows. I think they're planning on a couple more extra shows. Just to uh, play in the city, you know. Yeah, one in New York too. They're working on, I think. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're, they're always booking stuff for us, so it's like kind of crazy. Yeah. Because uh, at least now, right now, because of all the the traveling, the interviews, and they're getting home for a week to go to Europe, which is going to be killer over in Europe. It's Fala Carnage, Fallujah, and Havoc. Yeah, I heard yeah. that's going to be nuts, dude. I can't even wait to go and do this. I haven't seen some Fala Carnage in a good four or five years. Yeah, I'm dude, fine. they're really, really good. I mean, like. We had the chance to play with them at an uh, obscene extreme festival. Yeah, yeah. Not that long ago over in, uh, over in Europe. And, you know, dude, wow, they were fucking killing it. Man. So, I believe it. This is going to be a good tour. You know, a Badass. Well, um, as I'm wrapping it up, is there is there things you're still looking to accomplish for suffocation? Things I mean, to check off the list. For me, for me, it's more or less just keeping things consistent and getting it out as much to the public as possibly can. Yeah. Uh, I think in the kind of music that, we, that we're that we doing, there's a lot of actual musicianship involved in it. Yeah. And people just don't seem to see it as much. They just think it's kill your mother, kill your father, you know, rape your dog or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's definitely more to that than what there is, like, for the average person who just shuts it out. Yeah. So I think just opening people's minds up a little bit more would probably be more of the stepping stone I would be looking to try to accomplish other than just keeping the shit completely brutal. Well, how, much, <laughs> you know? how much more open-minded do you think people are, if at all, now compared to like, you know, when you started Suffo and it was very, well, very I, Yeah, I, you know, I think that as time grows, you know, all the older people that were around are bringing up younger people and the younger people are getting into more death and metalcore and stuff like that. So I think it's just adding to the scene more and more and more. It's just a matter of really being out there and catching the grass with the older fans and the younger fans all at the same, all the same time. time. And uh, it's kind of difficult to do unless you're really out there hitting the grindstone hard. You, know, you have a good record and you got a good push by maybe a good label or you're doing it yourself and you really saved up your money and your P's and Q's right. to go out and fucking do it, you know. Right. So, um, you know, basically it's just sticking to our guns, man, and hoping for the best so we can get a can of soup. <laughs> That's all mm. you can do in That's it. Well, cool, man. Well, stay on the road. Yeah. There it is. You gotta ram it down the throat before they're gonna understand it. You gotta sit in rainy alleys and that's then fucking right. kill it later on. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. it, man. I'm gonna fucking mash it. Rainy alleys. <laughs> <laughs> that's no idea. Right on. Gotta get down. Well, I'll leave last words to you guys, man. Say whatever you want to your fans. Um, anything you want to announce, go right ahead. Uh, suffocation, Pinnacle of Bedlam. If you haven't gotten it, get it. Thank you for coming out and supporting us all these years, man. We won't disappoint you. We're here to stay integral. Thanks for your support. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Thanks.